Good morning and welcome back to this channel. Yesterday we drove from Switzerland here to the Côte d'Azur and as a first stop we're in Menton. That's the beautiful colorful city you can see in my background. We're gonna head out and explore the city today so I'm very excited and I want you to come along and see what Menton is all about. The first stop of every visit to Menton is the Plage de Sablet. You get that picture perfect view of the old town. We were just talking about it, how perfect the colors match in this city. It's as if it was planned from the beginning. So it's a really nice spot to take some pictures. And now we're gonna head over into the old town and explore a bit. It's the perfect day, there are no clouds in the sky. We were up at the Saint Michel church. That clock tower is from the 18th century, but the real highlight of the church are the stairs leading up to it. They are very bright and yellow and again a great place for taking pictures. And then we came down one of the most typical French alleyways I've ever seen. It's really beautiful in this town. I feel very comfortable and it's also very quiet at this time of year. So maybe it's a good time to come during winter. We just had lunch next to the beach and there's this very nice salty smell in the air coming from the sea. It really feels like summer and Menton is the sunniest city in France. So a really good place to come in my opinion. Did you know that Menton is actually the only place in France where lemons can grow? That's why they have the Lemon Festival at the end of February and they form these spectacular sculptures in the middle of the city. We're now in the square where they're building them but right now they're not fully completed yet but we can already see how they're going to look like. It's really cool, they also have lots of oranges in the structure and it's a really big thing in the city. We'll also see plenty of shops selling products made out of lemon in Menton. We have come to a botanical garden called Serre de Madone. It's a bit outside of Menton, about a 10 hour, about a 10 minute drive. It costs 4 euros to enter and it's super nice. As soon as you arrive here, you feel calm. There are a lot of exotic plants and it was built in the 1920s. So there's a cool atmosphere around here. Hello and welcome back to this channel. Today we are in Sigtuna, which is not far away from Stockholm or Uppsala at all. We're just here for the day having a look around one of the oldest 
if not the oldest town in Sweden. This town literally dates back hundreds of years, so there's so much to see. During winter time, there's not that much sunlight in Sweden, so it's getting dark even though it has just gone past noon. But we're gonna have a look around. Already looks beautiful so far, some colorful buildings around. Sigtuna is a beautiful town located in the Stockholm area in Sweden and I absolutely recommend a visit. Make sure to watch until the end of the video as I will be giving you some important information for your visit. Known as one of the oldest towns in Sweden, Sigtuna is a popular destination for those looking to explore the country's rich heritage. Join us as we take a tour of this charming town and discover all that it has to offer. From ancient ruins to delicious local cuisine, there's something for everyone in Zigtuna. So sit back, relax and enjoy the journey as we explore one of Sweden's hidden gems. The old town of Zigtuna is a true gem in Sweden, showcasing the town's rich history and cultural heritage through its well-preserved medieval buildings and streets. Visitors can stroll along the cobblestone streets, admiring the historic churches and cute shops and cafes that dot the area. The town offers a glimpse into the past with many buildings dating back to the 11th century. St. Olaf's Church in Sigtuna is an important historical landmark that dates back to the 11th century as well. The church is dedicated to St. Olaf, the patron saint of Norway, and is one of the oldest surviving churches in Sweden. The church is known for its elongated shape and sturdy defense tower. It is characteristic for the Viking area architecture. The town of Sigtuna is surrounded by a beautiful natural landscape that offers visitors a variety of outdoor activities and experiences. The area is known for its lake views with Lake Malaren providing a beautiful backdrop to the town. While we were there, the lake was frozen, which was pretty cool. The town is also surrounded by lush forests, which are perfect for hiking, biking and nature walks. Make sure to check out this old bell tower on top of the hill above Situna. Here we go with the extra tips. Plan about five hours for your visit to Sigtuna. If you are looking to do longer hikes around Sigtuna, you need to plan a full day, of course. Parking can be limited in the old town, so plan accordingly and consider using public transport to get to the town. It's about one hour from Stockholm of public transport and one and a half hours from Uppsala. Third, check the opening hours of the museum and historical sites. Some of the museums and sites in Sigtuna have limited opening hours, so make sure to check in advance. While we were there, one of the main museums was closed, unfortunately. That is it for our quick tour around Sigtuna. I hope it got you interested in the town. Make sure to check out my other videos about Sweden and Scandinavia. Hello and welcome back to this channel. Today we are in Dordrecht, the Netherlands. This city doesn't get enough attention by tourists. So we made the way today from Den Haag. It took about 50 minutes with the train. This city was founded around the year 1000. So there's so much history to explore. Let's have a look around. As many other cities in the Netherlands, Dordrecht has a super important connection with water. Many of the houses are built right by the canal. And actually, uh, around the 15th century, Dordrecht was a very important port city. That was before Rotterdam or Amsterdam actually became big port cities and then they overtook Dordrecht. Now we're heading to the Grote Kerk, which means the big church. You see it from everywhere in the city and it was built in the 13th century. So let's have a look and hopefully we can get inside. Unfortunately the church is closed, quite a common thing in the Netherlands I've noticed, but at least we've come just in time to hear the church bell. Quite impressive. 
All right, just got super lucky. Um, a woman that works at the church came out of the church and let me in for five minutes to have a look around. So I managed to get some footage at least and it's very beautiful inside. So all that sightseeing got us hungry. So now we're at Rebel Rebel, which is very close to the big church. Let's head inside and see what they have for lunch. There we go. So I just got out of the restaurant. It was good, it was good. Uh, very delicious. Now we came outside. The weather's even better, super sunny. And we were blown away by all these boats in the harbor of Dordrecht. Who would have thought, to be honest? It's a bit like South of France around here. So yeah, super impressive. And then the beautiful old town just next to it. After strolling through the city for a bit longer, we've made it to the Groothoft gate. This used to be the entrance to the city in a very special location actually because here, right opposite of the gate, free reverse meat. It all comes together and it was obviously a perfect place for trading and to reach the city via the water. checking out Dordrecht's museum. I think it's an art museum, but also expect some history in here. It looks quite big and cool from the outside. So let's have a look. I just got out of the museum, it's completely art focused, so no real history of Dordrecht, even though you do learn some things through the paintings. It is quite interesting, there is an audio guide as well and a nice cafe there. So if you have some extra time on your hand, I recommend a visit, but it shouldn't be your top priority kind of. We really had an amazing day today in Dordrecht. It completely surprised me, I didn't expect it to be that beautiful and there's quite a lot of things to do. There's also other museums to explore if you have more time, but we're just ending it here, back at the spot where we were previously, where the canals meet. Super relaxing to watch the sunset and see the boats pass by. As I said in the morning we came from The Hague 
this morning but now we're heading back to Rotterdam so there's a super cool alternative to taking the train there's of course the main train station but you can also take a ferry and it's actually more of a speedboat so I'm quite looking forward to that experience as well Alright, so we arrived in Rotterdam, very glad I could share this with you. Just jumped on the boat quite spontaneously in Dordrecht and then it took about 50 minutes to get here to Rotterdam Central. Amazing views along the way, so I can totally recommend. Taxi is also super cheap, it's not like a scenic tour, it's just a mode of transport up the river. That was just on top, Dordrecht was amazing as I said. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.